All right, we're on Bechorot, Perik Aleph, Mishnah, second Mishnah, in the first chapter of Sechet Bechorot. We're continuing to talk about, let's go back to our beginning, we're going to talk about Pidyon Peter Chamor, Bechor Chamor. Remember, we learned that uh, the Bechor of a Chamor, of a donkey, uh, of, a, of, a, of a, yeah, a donkey, okay, um, you redeem it with a Seh, with a sheep. They, I mean, you transfer the Kedusha, the Petr Chamor, to the sheep, and the sheep you give to the Kohen, it's a, but it's not Kadosh. Let's go back to, and then we'll go back to, uh, to our Mishnah. Para, so let's say you had a para, a cow, she had not commit Chamor, who gave birth to a kind of donkey. I guess it was a cow that looks like a donkey. Or, Chamor she had not or a horse, uh, I'm sorry, donkey that gave birth to like a horse. So in all those cases, Patur min ha meaning you had to have a Chamor give birth to a Chamor. In Neymar, as it says, Petr Chamor, Petr Chamor. In the Sukim, it says, first born of the Chamor, first born of the donkey, Tnei Pami. It says it twice, Achiel Yoled Chamor, Valolad Chamor, until that which is born is a Chamor, and that, that which is giving birth is a Chamor, Yoled, that which is giving birth, Yoled, and that which is no lie, that which is born also be a Chamor. I am not an expert in as animal husbandry, so the probabilities of giving birth to a non Chamor from a Chamor. I'm not really much aware of. The only non-donkey uh, um, 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 offspring is a mule. A mule's offspring of a male donkey and a female horse. Okay, so the horses and donkeys are different species with different numbers of chromosomes. So you can have this idea of a mule, okay, and they are, they're, and mules are sterile. But whatever other things that are possible, I really don't know. Okay, umahi ba'achila. Okay, so what about eating it? Meaning if a para gave birth to a chamor, then can you eat the kinmin of chamor? Can you eat the ark of the para? Says the Mishnah, behemat to hora, she yalda kinmin behemat to meya. So behemat to hora, if you have a if you have a if you have a kosher animal that gave birth to a kind of a non-kosher animal or non-kosher looking animal, mutar ba'achila, then you could eat it. Uch meya, but a non-kosher animal, she yalda kinmin behemat to hora, that gave birth to like what looks like a to a kosher animal, asur ba'achila, then you can't eat. Shayotze mehatame tame. That which emerges from a non-kosher animal. I mean, the non-kosher animal gave birth. If you're, if you're, I don't know, leopard gave birth to what looks like a cow. Nonetheless, I mean, it's non-kosher. It's a, it's a leopard. But you say mean hat tahor. That which comes out from emerges from a kosher animal, tahor. That is kosher. That's the general rule. If it comes to a kosher animal, it's kosher. If it comes to a non-kosher animal, it's not. So, but the, what about dvash? Dvash devarin utsuain. So basically, bee honey, bee and wasp honey, mutar. Nonetheless, it's permitted. Ah, oh, it didn't come from a kosher animal. It's not considered as if the offspring of a non kosher animal, even though bees are not kosher. They don't create it from their flesh. Rather, they bring in the nectar. They eat from the flowers. That's how they make dvash. That's how they make honey. So, so, it's, so, so I mean, I don't know if, if scientifically Chazal were correct. I think the bees do process the honey. They clearly do, but Hazal obviously has a Masora in our tradition that honey from bees is kosher, even though the bees are not kosher. V'chalev adam mutar kishaperesh. Okay? Human milk is also permitted, even though humans are not permitted. Et cetera, et cetera. V'chol al-alilok yishtei isha. So if it's permitted, it's prohibited to nurse for, for a non-child, obviously. From a woman, v'chol shah chalak shah behima v'chaya atamea ha-veyotein hatamei Yes, or any other milk from a non-kosher animal, other than a human being, is is from the offspring that which emerges from a non-kosher um, um, organism, and it's trait. Similarly, dog If a non-kosher dog non-kosher fish, swallow a dog or a kosher fish, and then you caught the non-kosher fish, you opened up its stomach, and inside it is the kosher fish. You can eat the kosher fish inside, meaning it's considered still whole. Okay. But the horse of Allah, Dr. Me, if a kosher fish swallowed a non kosher fish, okay, Asur Bachila, you can't eat it, the fish ain't no gidula. It doesn't come from the kosher fish. It didn't grow it, rather, it just swallowed it. But some part of the thing that, that grew from the fish, that odds offering from the fish, that would from the kosher fish would be kosher. We'll stop here. Dedicate our learning to memory of my father, Arab Simcha Mitzka, comments, questions, send me an email. I'm happy to try to answer.